Transfusion Reactions Introduction Transfusion of blood and blood products serves too many advantages. It helps in treatment of various hematological conditions, but, like all other medical practices, transfusion also comes with its own complications, termed transfusion reactions. Transfusion reactions can happen in donor as well as recipient. Donor can generally have complaints, ranging from pain, bruises or hematoma formation, vasovagal syncope due to hypotension, or apheresis due to transient hypocalcemia while in recipient. Most common complication is fever, but some fatal transfusion reactions like transfusion-related acute lung injury can be seen as well. To avoid such reactions, there are protocols which must be followed properly before commencing a transfusion. In case of blood transfusion, it must be completed within 4 hours after being released from blood bank and within 30 minutes after removing blood bag from refrigerator to avoid risk of bacterial infections. Whole blood or packed RBC transfusion must be done within 4 hours. Platelet and fresh frozen plasma transfusion must be done within 20 minutes. It's recommended to use 18-19 to 19 gauge needle for transfusion, and transfusion set should have a filter of 170 micrometer pore size. Monitoring patients must be done during first 15 minutes, followed by every hour during the time of transfusion, at the end of transfusion, and after 4 hours of completion. Transfusion-related acute lung injury is the most common cause of death after a blood transfusion. The most common complication of blood transfusion is febrile non-hemolytic reaction. The most common complication of blood transfusion in comatose patients is blood coming out of venipuncture site. Types of transfusion reaction There are two major types of transfusion reaction based on time of onset. Acute reactions, which occur within 24 hours of transfusion, and delayed reactions, which occur after 24 hours of transfusion. These reactions can be immune-mediated or non-immune-mediated. Acute reactions, immune-mediated. Febrile non-hemolytic transfusion reaction. It's the most common complication. It occurs due to antibodies working against donor leukocytes, HLA agents. Multiparous women and those who receive multiple transfusions, like patients with thalassemia major, are at highest risk. Recipient presents with rise in temperature by 1 degree, chills, rigors, and flushing. Primary step to avoid such complication is to use leukodepleted blood, and symptomatic treatment should be undertaken. Acute Hemolytic Transfusion Reaction It's a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction caused by mismatched blood transfusion. It presents clinically as fever, chills, hypotension, hemoglobinuria. In such patients, blood transfusion must be immediately stopped. Intravenous lines should be maintained with saline transfusion. Diuretics, analgesics, can be added as symptomatic therapy. Allergic reaction. It occurs due to reaction of donors' plasma proteins with recipients' IgE-initiating release of mast cell mediators. It presents as urticaria, pruritus, and flushing. Use of antihistamines prior to transfusion is advised to avoid this complication. Anaphylaxis. It occurs due to recipients' antibodies reaction against donor plasma proteins such as IgA, complements, hapidoglobin, etc. It manifests as hypotension, bronchospasm, increased heart rate, laryngeal edema, stridor. <laughs> those with IgA deficiency are at highest risk of developing such a reaction. It's an emergency condition, which is treated with adrenaline injection of 0.5 milliliters in 1 to 1,000 solution given subcutaneously or intramuscularly. Use of steroids, antihistamines, and IgA-deficient blood is also helpful in such patients. Transfusion-Related Acute Lung Injury It occurs in less than 6 hours of transfusion. It's mostly seen with transfusion of fresh frozen plasma. Those donors who have pre-existing anti-HLA-1 or 2 antibodies or anti-neutrophilic antibodies, such as in multiparous women or persons who received multiple transfusions, cause leukocyte aggregation recipients, mostly in pulmonary capillaries, leading to ventilation perfusion imbalance and release of cytokines. 
Recipients present with acute onset hypoxemia, non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, respiratory failure, cyanosis. Immediate oxygen support is needed in such patients. Acute reactions, non-immune mediated, transfusion-related sepsis. It's caused by transfusion of contaminated blood. It presents with septic manifestation within 90 minutes of transfusion. Symptomatic therapy with antibiotics to prevent septic shock must be given. Transfusion-associated circulatory overload. Caused by volume overload, it manifests as increase in blood pressure, signs of congestive heart failure, and wheezing. Use of diuretics, oxygen, and close monitoring of flow rates helps the patients. Air embolism. It's caused by presence of air in intravenous line, resulting in sudden onset dyspnea, cyanosis, back or shoulder pain, and decrease in blood pressure. With the onset of such symptoms, the patient should be positioned in the left Trendelenburg position, and if required, aspiration of air must be carried out. Electrolyte imbalance. It can occur both in recipients as well as in donor. In donor, transient hypocalcemia may be caused leading to apheresis, and in recipients, metabolic alkalosis can occur. Symptomatic management is sufficient in such cases. Delayed reactions, immune mediated. Delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction. It's a late onset reaction to donor's red cell antigen. It presents clinically as fever and mild jaundice. Translation-associated immunomodulation. It's caused by reaction to allogenic leukocytes. It increases risk of infections and cancers in recipients. Graft versus host disease. It's caused by engraftment of donors T8 leukocytes. Clinically, it presents with fever, diarrhea, the rash, and even frank pancytopenia may occur. Use of irradiated blood is advised in susceptible cases. Post-transfusion purpura. It's caused by antibodies working against platelets. It presents as thrombocytopenia, bleeding, and formation of purpuras. Steroids, intravenous immunoglobulins, can be given as treatment, and also plasmapheresis can be done. Delayed reactions, non-immune mediated. Iron overload. It's usually seen in persons who receive multiple blood transfusions, it can cause secondary hemochromatosis. Patients present with diabetes mellitus, cirrhosis, hyperpigmentation. Iron collating agents like deferoxamine can be used in treatment. Massive blood transfusion reactions. Massive blood transfusion is defined as replacement of blood volume in 24 hours or more than 50% blood volume in four hours in adults and transfusion of more than 40 milliliters per kilogram blood in a child. Some complications associated with massive blood transfusions are hypocalcemia. Hypokalemia occurs more often than hyperkalemia. Hypoglycemia often seen instead of hyperglycemia. Metabolic alkalosis, hypothermia, dilutional thrombocytopenia caused by 15 to 20 units of blood components. Dilutional coagulopathy, leading to disseminated intravascular coagulation. It's the most common cause of mortality following a massive blood transfusion.